Hey, HTDA, and welcome back to Satisfactory. Last time around, we built this pretty awesome facility, and to be honest, I'm pretty proud of it. But I have noticed a problem. Over the last 10 episodes or so, every time we build something, and then one or two episodes later, I'm kind of regretting what we built because I want to scale it up. Now, of course, there's different ways to go about that. You could just build a new facility somewhere else, and that's pretty much what we have been doing so far. But to be honest, I'm not entirely enjoying that. Well, I am enjoying it, don't get me wrong, but I don't think it's optimal. And I'm the type of guy that is inclined to start a new game every time he feels like he's doing something wrong. I'm not going to do that, don't worry. But it does lead me to wonder if we should redesign a part of our facility. And I'll jump to the other facility to show you why. Now here's an overview of our nice little starting facility. And... As good as it looks, and to be honest, I think it looks pretty decent, it's completely unscalable. So that means, for example, that if we were to replace these miners with Mark II miners, and we have some miners over here as well, we would have to pretty much redesign this entire thing anyway to make use of that additional throughput. Um, on top of that, it doesn't actually really allow for in and exporting of um, items. I mean, we were doing exactly that here with the trucks, as you can see. Um, but to really do that at a larger scale and with multiple different items, it would be become a mess really, really fast. And that's not really what I want to do. So the real question then becomes, how do we fix this? Now, to be honest, I don't think there's really an easy way to fix this, but I am inclined to just completely scrap this and rebuild what we already have. Um, we can do that a lot quicker than we initially built it because now we know what we're doing. Um, and set it up in such a way that it will become a lot easier to scale it up as we get further into the game. So I am going to do exactly that. And yes guys, don't worry, I saved before I started deleting everything. And in case you ever wondered what a completely dismantled base looks like when you put it all into storage, well, this is it. Now, night falling over my base might be a little bit symbolic, and even Bob seems a little sad just walking around places that used to hold miners and buildings and foundations. But to be honest, I'm quite excited about kind of doing this over, but doing it the right way in such a way that we can actually work a little bit more efficiently with it. Now, before we do that, I am going to get out my measuring tape because I want to really note down some of the basics on the sizes of things and how things actually interact with each other before we start designing a completely new base. Now in order to satisfy my OCD when it comes to building factories and planning ahead and making sure they look pretty, I made this little mock-up factory here where we can easily see how much space every single building needs and we can plan ahead on that. So let's just walk through it from left to right. The smelters are really nice and tiny, you can easily fit them in a single um, foundation in terms of how wide they are but you can actually fit three of them on two foundations if that's what we want to do if we want to be minimalistic so that's really nice to know and that makes um, at least smelting a very straightforward thing to do and doesn't take up a lot of space now when it comes to the constructors they are slightly bigger they do still fit into a single foundation but it's going to take up exactly one foundation. So to be honest, I kind of like that. That makes it uh, really easy to kind of plan that out. But it is important to notice that they are slightly bigger than the smelter. So if you want to input directly from a smelter, you're going to need to make sure you take that into account. Now what else? Um, we have the assemblers, which are, to be honest, a little bit infuriating. Because they seem to be exactly one foundation wide. But in fact, they're not. You actually need one space in terms of um, width on each side to, before you can place them next to each other. It works the same as with the foundries actually, as you can see over here, that I did place at the minimal distance. And if you do that, you can actually fit five of those in six foundations in terms of how wide they are. This is going to be the minimalistic type of um, spacing. Now, specifically when it comes to the foundries and the um, assemblers, what you could also do is you can kind of use one and a half foundation and if you do that, you get a layout like over here, and you exactly have enough room to put in one belt in between. Now, I'm not entirely sure why or when we should be able to do that, but it's nice to keep that in mind. Now, if you look at how I place these splitters as well, you can kind of get a feel for how that looks. And when it comes to splitters and um, mergers, I also stack them up to see how high we could get them. 
and how many foundations we need to actually cover them up. And it turns out you need an exactly two of the four meter foundations in order to um, put another floor on top of that, a minimalistic floor, and that should exactly cover the uh, belts. Now, of course, this is going to clip, but it won't actually come through. So this is a very minimalistic and nice way to build. Last but not least, of course, I measured out how many belts you could fit on a single foundation. The answer is three uh, or well, four, I suppose, if you uh, count the overlap in between them. But uh, realistically, just looking at the splitters and mergers, you're probably going to want to save a little bit more room for that. So this is not all that interesting. Now, what is actually interesting or at least a little bit curious is that the single storage units that I stacked up over here are going to take up exactly the same space as the larger storage facility that is a single building that we unlocked recently. Uh, I'm not entirely sure when we will ever need this because to be honest, this gives you um, less flexibility because this is going to combine everything into one storage unit where are, these are two different items that could be stored separately uh, while taking up the same space. But yeah, it's at least good to know that even though the picture when you start building those are is, it does actually seem like it's supposed to be bigger. Where, where are the uh, organization? Yeah, here. It looks a lot bigger, but to be honest, it's, it's actually not. So, yeah, that's uh, that's interesting to note. All right, well, with everything like this uh, in mind, let's start planning out our actual facility this time. And as dawn breaks on our new facility, or at least what will be our new facility, I decided on the priorities I want to have for this kind of this rebuild. First of all, I want it to be scalable. And in order to do that, I am going to need a lot of space around it. And I am also actually considering building to the world grid rather than just whatever grid I happen to place down myself. Now, the reason for that last one, I'm not entirely sure about it yet, to be honest. Uh, but the reason for that last one is that it would make it a lot easier to actually connect everything up uh, when we really start interconnecting our facility and make that really nice and tidy. So I figure why not try starting to build to the world grid and if it doesn't work for whatever reason we can always just opt out of it at some point anyway. Now last but not least I also want to make sure our builds are as efficient and good looking as possible. And now we've actually unlocked quite a few things. I think we should be able to do that. So let's get to it. And I've decided on something like this. This is a 5x10 grid uh, built to the world grid. And it has a lot of space around it. So it meets that criteria. It's close to all the resources that we're going to need in terms of the iron that I'm going to be using over here. And yeah, because it, it has so much room around it, we can have trucks or trains or whatever driving through here if that's what we want to do. We can actually get around it on all the sides. Uh, we have plenty of room to fill around with belts, storage, etc., etc. Now a 10 uh, by 5 grid is way more than what we actually are going to need for now, but that's the whole point because that will allow us to actually scale this up. Now there's one last criteria that I actually forgot, and that is that it needs to be easily upgradable because if we unlock higher tiers belts uh, i'm not entirely sure what else there will be but higher tier anything i want to be able to reach all of that and be able to upgrade that but of course if we make a very tight construction such a way that we can't really get through all of it even though it might look very nice then it's going to be a nightmare to upgrade it so that's one more thing that we need to take into account now, I do have a plan for that, so let me build something out and show you what I mean. As a first step, I built this little smelting setup over here. So we have a Mark III belt coming in that is enough to saturate at least nine smelters. Now, we have only eight here because I can't deal with uneven numbers. So I figured why not just put in eight and make it look a little bit more tidy. To be honest, the Mark III belt is a little weird considering... We went from 60 to 120 to 270. So in terms of scaling, it doesn't really work for me anyway. So I'm just going to ignore that for the moment, at least over here, and assume that the maximum throughput is 240, which is exactly eight smelters. Now, as you can see, the smelters are very nicely aligned like that, and we can exactly fit in the um, elevators over here. And yeah, all in all, looking pretty nice. Now, we could actually minimize this a little further, uh, because the um, smelters, as you saw just a few minutes ago, can actually be stacked up closer than we are currently have them. But we're not going to do that because we are going to have plenty of room in this space 
level anyway as you will see in a moment now this is going to output on two different belts on the outsides over there but there is a method to my madness because these two outgoing belts will be going right into a storage facility over here which nicely lines up with all these smelters because it's exactly as big and then these two storage facility combine back into a single merger and put everything back on a single belt so this setup over here will um, transform an entire belt of iron ore into iron ingots and put it back on a single belt to be used elsewhere of course elsewhere is not going to be too far off because we are elevating this belt of iron ingots in going up and then we have a similar setup over here where we are smelting those uh, iron ingots into iron plates now to show you what that actually looks like because to be honest it might not be that intuitive although it's not that different from what we did below but we basically put in another floor and splitters again and those are splitting into the constructors and then the belt is actually flipping back to the front over here into the storage facilities so these storage facilities will be filling up with iron plates if we have any surplus and that will just allow us to stock these up and grab some if we need them now we are actually going to break the one of the rules that i initially set uh, at least well i'm not entirely sure that was a was a strict rule but we have iron plates over here and we also want the iron rods those two items are as you know the first few things you are going to build in the game and i want a facility that i could in theory when i ever start a new game um could actually kind of rebuild from scratch and considering you're going to have to build the iron ingots uh, as well as the iron rods and the iron plates from the get-go it makes sense to combine those into a single facility now in order to do that i'm actually going to have to scale everything up a little bit as well uh, add in two more levels and to be honest when you do that and you make a full belt of iron rods something kind of cool happens so let me build that and show you so the first little twist is that the smelting facilities that we put in over here are actually reversed so we are still bringing in the iron ore from the input side but we're also bringing it right back the outputs uh, to the input side as well and combining them through once again of course storage units in the back into a single merger now this merger is actually in positions in such a way that the lift the elevator that we're going to be building for the resource to go up will actually be on the outside of the base now is that practical not necessarily does it affect the scaling nope but it does look really cool so it's just a little bit of variation to put in there while you're building such a large facility now I don't know about you, but I think this setup of iron rod production with a roof on top of it looks really, really, really cool. Now these are 16 constructors making iron rods and that's only going to give us one full belt of iron rods, 240 per second to be exact, no, not per second, per minute. Um, but we're going to need all of those, I'm sure. So yeah, even though being pretty on the inside is of course what counts we are also going to see if we can make this thing look good from the outside as well and there we go this is the end result all the foundations make sure everything is nicely aligned the bells being raised make sure it's easy to get around it's also pretty good looking from both the ground as from a distance because once you're down on the ground you can see all the uh, things moving above you but you don't have to jump over all the belts to get around everything going into the facility is really nice as well and standing next to it you can really see how high it is and to be honest it makes it really nice to look at the wall segments are missing intentionally because i just think it's nicer to look at than just giant box of the same walls and of course the pillars are not functional but they make it look um, like an actual building being supported now the storage facilities are going to be supported with some sinks in a moment because of course we don't have anywhere for these resources to go yet but this facility does replace our um, starting facility although we already scaled it up quite a bit and we're going to put all those resources to use in the next episode when we build a new build for our more complicated items make sure i catch you in the next one